Uh, Hello. Still waiting on the boy. Yeah. How long is a bit? <laughs> Fucking could be anywhere between now and infinity. But it's <laughs> the one problem. Mm. Mordo. 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 Hordo. Hordo. So. Your mum eats bricks. Yeah, I went there. How dare you, sir? <laughs> One day soon we will play again. So I've been waiting. The hype must not be contained anymore. <laughs> I've got a question. Yes. Have either of you ever seen an anime series and you're just thinking, what the fuck is this? Yes. Most slice of life anime that somehow turn out to be horrors. Like, it comes mm. out of nowhere as well in some of them. Yeah. I've been watching game compila compilations from Let's Play Let's Players, mm. and one of the funniest ones was them doing the Ace Attorney series. Mm, God. And then, on my recommendation list, I had clips of the actual Ace Attorney anime series, and I am just, what the fuck is this? <laughs> It just does not make sense. <clears throat> they try to be funny in some of them. And it's just... Yeah. That's your flavor. I don't know why I've got that song stuck in my head. I'm not even sure what it is. What's your flavor? Uh, Tell me what's your flavor. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I would say strawberry is mine. Is it because you like strawberries, or do you feel that you have a strawberry-like personality? Yeah, sure. What do you mean, sure, like I'm the weird one? <laughs> sure, the one who's like, I have a personality of a strawberry. I didn't say nothing. Your question issued was, do you like strawberry, or is that your personality? And I'll have you know, I didn't say yes to a specific one. So, oh fuck are you. Yeah, bish. Yeah, boring. Yeah, drongo. How very dare you? <laughs> um, I mean, I've already said it anyway, but obviously Jeff won't be joining us. Um, he has. I I can't remember the life of me what it was precisely. It was. Quite a minute ago when he sent it, but 
Uh, oh yeah, uh, it's a government uh, engineering internship, so he'll be apparently working on an air force base. So he's going to be a yeah. slightly busy bee. Yeah. So we are one one man down, and as I've said before, if anyone does want or recommends anyone for a long term thing, uh, let me know. Yeah. But until then, we will be a three man. <clears throat> yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I will miss Jeff. Hmm. But when life throws you um, government internships, yeah. <laughs> As in for being able to recommend anyone full time, I haven't got anyone fully in mind at the moment. Because mm -hmm. I could ask a few people from the server, but it's just whether they've got the time to want to fully commit, if you get what I mean. I mean, to be fair, even if it's like the equivalent to a short story for them while they're helping out your, char your guys' characters. Yeah. Like, that's fine. An in and out thing. And if they want to stay, they can stay. But. Yeah. Mm. I could always, um. I could always put some form of notice up on, um. On the server I'm on. Mm -hmm. like, being like, yo, nerds. D and D opportunities. Hmm. Hmm. Because it might, it might even be that Stefan might even be interested out of nowhere. Which one was Stefan? Um, he did the one shot with us recently with Chloe. Mm, is he he had the bard right? Yeah, he was playing the bard, mm. and he had the helmet on and was mm. talking like this. He was always in character. I loved that. And when he played his yeah. instrument, fucking. Mm, mm. <laughs> Yeah, he's very in it. He's very um, in tune like that. Because um, you know the one shot that um, I got you in, mm -hmm. as well as another group. He was in the second group, and he was quite quiet with that character. But that was because he's, he made his qu character quite quiet and sort of like um, very. He made him. He made the person. He, person he played as some sort of like. Um, religious zealot kind of um, fighter mm -hmm. and was just very um, what's the word very um, to themselves and just every so often if they felt the value the values that they held dear to them was at question they would protect it yeah. or just say or he would just say something very in character sort of like hmm you, do, you can do what you will but um, I do not wish to partake in this and, Hello, blah, 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 and stuff like that Hello, Mozzie. Hello. I'm in a bit. Minutes? That's what, what time do you call this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will not accept I any of them. I spilled water on the desk, so yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I was going to say, I will not accept any other answer other than D and D time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I'm well, considering yeah. you said you spilled water, I hope at the very least it was sexy. Because if not, you've wasted everyone's time for nothing. How dare you? I, I spilled water on the desk. It could still end up being sexy. You don't know that. Well, actually, you should know that because you'd be involved. He's, but he's out of line. Let me but ask, let me ask a third party. Was it sexy? Me spilling water. Nah, she she doesn't think so. Ugh. 
<laughs> Wasted everyone's time, Mosey. Disappointing your girlfriend, too. God, we want water erotica, goddammit. Get wet for your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a shot of Nathan, it's fine. That'll do. Acceptable. Um, not really, that's being hygienic, that's not getting dirty. Hey, you still get... Connor, Connor, I'll take what I can, okay? I can't force him to do something, but if he's at least going to get a shower, that's everyone solved, okay? We'll settle. That's that's water polo, then. Well, you can right? say that right now I'm a dirty, dirty boy that needs exact... to take a shower. Exactly. See, see, there we... this is all I wanted, guys, okay? <laughs> this This is all I wanted. <laughs> All of you fuckers roll a d20 and honestly it's more to give inspiration, I'll be doing the recap. I was going to say I partly remember but it's going to be a show. Hon honestly, I, I remember the bare minimal but it's been a Wait, minute. Didn't we level up something? Um, I don't think so. You, no, think so. you should be at level 4 if you're not changed that. No, yeah, I am. Just the okay. You, you're fine then. Character master <laughs> level up thing is shiny, so I don't know. Mm -mm. Always, o always, always ignore the monster. It does its own thing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Fuck. Then I need to remember what happened. No, no, no. It's don't worry. I, I said I'll be doing the recap. This is just for you guys to get inspiration. Yeah, Lee's got you. Mm -hmm. Uh, if. You don't already have uh, inspiration, Kirby. Feel free to give it to someone. Oh, I thought it was whoever's rolled, who, who, whoever rolled lowest. No, it's always. Um, it's to... Well, we've had a massive long break, and mm -hmm. I'm... so Lee's doing us the courteous thing of giving everyone inspiration after the break back. Hey, and, I didn't um... say that. I should. <laughs> I've decided I, I will. Inspiration. Um, and I'm and I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck, fuck, you know, fuck the dice and all that. It's it, it's a New Year present or New Christmas, whatever. Everyone gets inspiration. Um, it's just New Year inspiration. Yeah, New Year inspiration. Why not? <laughs> I will say as well. Um, if you already have it, I mean, tough luck, I guess. But if this yeah, gives you it, everyone can ask uh, one question equivalent to the usual inspiration rules. Can I give Brick my inspiration? Sure. I have made a sheet for him, so why not? <laughs> Here you go, Brick. That's, that's, that's the closest thing I got to sort of like pass that on to anyone who hasn't got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Halfie's still got one as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, cool. Um, the short and symbols. Last time, very, very long time ago. Before the world was young, uh, a fresh face, and now it is very old and in a new age, also known as 2023, you all were still in the village. You'd spent a night in a bit of revelry, somewhat, getting to know people here and there. Uh, found out that someone can speak Brick's tongue pretty loosely, to the point they can at least communicate. You learned some things about each other, you learned some things about him. You found out that the woman that was walking with you was the mayor of uh, the place, which maybe to some of you is dismay. You managed to get a night's sleep, woke up the next day to healthier, I believe, uh, finding out there was a woman running toward the camp. You all eventually got tasked with helping her out and you were told you would be paid for your services depending on what the problem is. You found out based on description and using the bestiary that you have, the creature that she'd mentioned uh, was a charger triceratops, which is a wonderful beast that is massive in scale and has ginormous horns and a strong cranium capable of crushing trees like they're nothing. You found its trail of destruction. Uh, I'm going to quickly go back on myself real quick. Her brother was apparently caught in amongst its rampage. It isn't known to be a carnivore. It is solely a herbivore. But given the destruction you can see before you, 
and you are currently trailing through, the chances of him being hurt are pretty high. But nonetheless, she did ask if you could bring back proof for one way or another. And I do believe there was a mention of a necklace that he would have as proof. You all currently in the path that the creature had stomped through, walking along, had noticed you were being stalked by assortments of creatures. And that is pretty much where we left off. Um, you each technically have free roam at the moment because the creatures do slash don't know you're aware. They know you're there and they can see you're looking slyly but they aren't engaging just yet. But it is clear that something at the end over by the large tree that's been toppled over you can kind of see the shadow of something large hanging over it that's hiding. What do you guys want to do? That's a good question, Mister. Mm. We mm. noticed all the things looking at us, right? Mm -hmm. On the map where the uh, red dots are, are the ones that have been seen. And they are pointed out to you. Weapons ready? Um, yeah. Do you, do you say that as a suggestion or are you um, openly just getting out your weapons? They can clearly see us. If this is an ambush, I don't see a way around it. We'd best be ready. Garrick's just gonna very um, silently just say this and just say they don't seem to be well aware that we know. So if we keep somewhat blissfully ignorant they might think we have the they have the jump on us and we can turn it on them. stop here and talk too long, they may get suspicious. Let's just keep going. Then we carry Very on. slowly. While I cast major, Mage Armor, of course. Mm -hmm. As you cast that, there is a, a small bit of light from the casting of the spell, and for a second your eyes, just in the top left corner of your vision, over where the red dot is over here, you notice the very slight head of something poke out from the bushes for a small second and then disappear back in and it's almost like the body has camouflaged itself slightly. You just about see the eyes and a little bit of a nose and then it slinks away again. I'm going to uh, telepathically tell everyone uh, what I saw here. Hmm. And I'm going to ask, uh, fuck, I forgot the names already, Carrick. <laughs> Can you switch places with me? Because you're yeah. a bit more beefy boy than me. Um, of course. Who's proficient with perception? Yeah, not me. Um, I'm proficient now. Uh, Connor, make a perception check. Nice. Uh, okay. Uh, so you, as you're walking along, you hear the sound of the trees and some of the leaves rustling just a little bit. And you kind of turn your eyes' attention without turning your head much, and you see in the corners of your eyes, behind you and to the right, they've shifted around 
to try and get ready to jump. At the minute, they're still distant enough, though. Mm -hmm. Also, a curiosity. Um, this verge here to the path we're on, mm. how much of a drop is that? It's it's a five foot slope. It's literally mm. straight diagonal. Oh, so we can easily get up there. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just going to message, um, well, reply to Mozzie and if he's still keeping up some form of message. Yep. Saying, um, hmm, not sure from here whether it would be more ad advantageous for us to um, either walk up to the left of us, well, to the right of us, or carry on the path. Well, they want us to keep going from what you can probably see. Uh, I think if we go to the left or to the right, it might put a wrench in their plan, but it could escalate things. They might just want to see if we, you know, just peacefully and go on quietly. Exactly. So this is a um, homely sort of place. This is a wilderness. So I'm assuming that most things out here is either eat or be eaten. In this case, it might be an idea that they'll probably lie and wait till we reach a certain point and get the maximum advantage from the terrain because we're not exactly accustomed to. Taking a slight detour might derail anything that they could do. Well, if we want, I can just throw a fireball to someone. Hmm. Can do if you want. Because we've not reached... We've not reached the log up ahead yet, and that's probably the most prime place for an ambush. Because whatever's on top of that will jump down on us, and then everything else will come from our flanks. Mm. If we give them level flooring for us to fight against, they're not going to have as much of a fun time. I could easily run up here and try and grapple whoever's there. If you want to try, if you want to try and be diplomatic. Can uh hold on, let me check if I have something. Oh for you. This easier. You have a spell called diplomacy. <laughs> oh for no, you. kind of taps your shoulder, Carrick, and goes, "I can cast speak with animals if that would make anything easier." Though, whether you can convince it is the problem. I'm not exactly going to say, well, I'm not exactly a druidic type, so talking with um, beasts aren't exactly going to be my specialty, even if you do give me ability to talk with them. Well, That's as I stated. It doesn't have to it be is. you. No? It can be whoever. I'm for it. If you all want, I can speak with them. Alright, let's try it before we go forward then. This will either work, and they might emerge and talk with us for a moment, or they'll attack immediately. So, just oh. be ready. Either or. He's going to place his hand on his chest, and similar to his usual theming, 
you notice the hand, uh, the skin on the back of his hand sheds off just a, a slight bit enough that you can see bits of skin have torn. And then as it tears off, it floats up into the air as if it's caught by a breeze. And then you see he closes his eyes for a moment. And he looks out and around, trying to see if there's any of them in particular that are looking toward him. Listen, I know you can all hear me now. Come on out. We just want to talk for the moment. We might even offer you some food if you cooperate. And with your current perception still active, uh, Connor, you hear a little bit of movement. You even see a couple of new spots that start to move around. You still can't see the creatures themselves, but you notice what look to be these little, almost like claws and quills kind of poke out just a slight bit, as if they're listening, but not giving up the element just yet. He healthily looks towards the rest of you and kind of makes a motion of what do you want me to say? game and wait, but I can't exactly say waiting's on our time. Or we take a step forward and see what happens from there. And thirdly, you could just try repeating the same message and see if there's any of it further advancements. Hmm. You can say, or maybe something along the lines of, uh, we just want to pass by, we don't want to fight. Just let us go, and you'll live. Hmm. So he takes slow steps forward, repeats uh, the statement, and as you guys kind of look out and around, you hear the sound of wood cracking and bowing, and then you see over by the tree trunk as this creature climbs up and around onto the top of it oh and as it ah. lands on the top of it it looks over toward each of you its massive feet holding very tightly onto the trunks gripping and tearing into it as it looks over towards you it kind of snarls a little and looks around the area around you and then it starts to make these low guttural kind of bestial sounds towards you all um it sounds like he's not a fan of letting us go even if we give him something well tell him You think you have us surrounded, but the truth is, I see each and every one of you, and we have backup that surrounds you already, because we knew it, it, this would happen. Okay. So just back off, and everything will be fine. He will repeat the statement, though he has to do a deception check. Hmm? That sounds pretty fucking good to be fair. <laughs> Um, <coughs> as he as he says it you notice the creature while he's looking with that kind of curious but confusion as he is actually speaking with him he continues his guttural sounds while looking around the area keeping his eyes out for something and then it looks back over to you towards you does a little growl of irritance and continues seemingly talking. He, he uh, says something about an offering for traveling through, and then he'll let us go. Something about what? About an offering. Offering? Mm -hmm. huh. What do they want? Let's see what they have. Um, 
It's something about a, a kill, a, a trinket of a kill. Trinket of a kill. And I assume bones or maybe f maybe hide skin. Huh. Uh, Lee. Yep. What's a lesion? Hmm. That technically could be considered a kill. A lesion is. Um, if I remember rightly, basically a tree spirit. Uh -huh. uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, yeah, they're like uh, ancient defenders of the forest. Okay, because they have bones of Valetian, so... Oh, that would definitely work. Yeah, so I just pulled this out, and I want him to guarantee that we will have safe passage both in and out. Uh, so he repeats the statement motions toward you for the offering and then waits for a moment you see as the creature releases its grip on the trunk and starts pacing for a moment keeping its eyes on you moving left, moving right and you see the tail making very little motions and you see it clamps down on its teeth for a moment and then it stops, crunches back in again, looks over. You see its head bob very evidently to a nod. It then jumps down, lands into the soft, crushed earth. It does this almost kind of like a cry outward. And all the creatures tucked away very gently show themselves as they crawl outward uh, so as they all reveal themselves and look over toward you you see each of them their jaws are like constantly like vibrating almost you, you assume it's some kind of thing they do when they're about to pounce um, the creature climbs up the side here and says to Halfir, you can leave the offering on the trunk and we won't pursue, but don't come back. We'll have to come back for here, but... We can always find that never room. Sure, then uh, shall we continue? Worst case scenario, if we do have to go back here, just bring another offering. Yep, that could also work. I mean, we are chasing a giant triceratops. <laughs> I'll take one step forward while sort of like keeping an eye on my surroundings. Yep. As you do, you notice the teeth chattering gets audible. And as you kind of like keep your eyes on them, you notice some of them have this these little slicks of drool and they're fighting the urge to pounce. And then you notice the one on the right hand here is looking over toward the boss. It looks over toward it. And then this one over here, you see as its claws are like digging very heavily into the ground. They don't do anything just yet though. One more step forward. Yeah. But by this point, I will have my um, my backhand near my weapon, just in case. Mm -hmm. But not making it overly obvious I'm doing it. Yep. So as you were looking to funnel forward. Brick as well has a great axe ready, which I made sure to notify myself of on his character sheet for some reason. I literally said in all capitals, put a great axe here, stupid. <laughs> um, so as you get to this point, you notice this little fucker here, the one that was clawing along the ground, it gets 
its back arched all the way in. You see its head start to tilt a little to the left, and it's looking away for a moment. And then its body bursts straight forward. However, before it gets close enough to get to your resident sorcerer, you see the clawed hand of the bigger one grab, it being impaled by the quills on its back, grab it, pull it forward, and take a large chunk out of its skull and kill it immediately. Ugh. Wow. And pulls In that it reaction back. of it of it ju- of it jumping down, I sort of like stop, uh, sort of like twist my body forward and just sort of like prepare to p- draw my blade, but I stop just as I see the claw. You see, as the claw holds it for a moment, the hand itself is bleeding from holding onto the quills that have pierced straight through it. The creature just pulls it forward with very little real pain on its face as it takes that giant chunk out of its head and chews on it while it's watching all of you. And it does this motion that basically points you to go Mm -hmm. as it starts continuing to eat the rest of the body in little chunks. Uh, I'm just going to hurry up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to turn forward and walk whilst keeping an eye on my surroundings. Um, so feel free to place uh, take the lesion uh, bits out of your inventory yeah I'm gonna do the, just that as you pull them out and you scatter them very gently in a pile and you guys continue walking out you watch as it seems to sniff the air as you're walking by but then does nothing and you all will make it through the back without a combat, which, not gonna lie, I expected one. <laughs> so, as you pass through and head, um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't entirely remember which way you guys said you were going, because this map leads two directions. Um, uh... Were you going toward where the creature ran to or ran from? I think we yeah. said ran to. Okay. Yeah. Because we went to see if it was still alive because mainly where it's ran from, if it um, was chasing the brother, it would either still would have been giving chase and then running from something, or it may, or the brother may have actually latched himself on it. But if not, if we don't find the brother, we can only assume that it's by where um, it ran from, and then we'd have the reconnaissance there. Okay. Uh, cool. Then as you continue walking forward towards a large forest, again, very tall, tall trees, leaving a large canopy above. The entryway to it has been pretty much smashed to bits, which you would expect. It leaves a very long open roadway of sorts, with a similar appearance to this map. There's just this one long trail that's been, just been smashed through by giant feet. As you follow it along for the first couple of minutes, you notice this forest, in comparison to the length of distance that thing has taken, is next to nothing but ahead of you a good maybe another mile or so you see what looks to be this uh, small area that seems to be a kind of crater where the large footfalls have stopped is there anything you guys want to do while you're in a foresty area such as collect ingredients or anything or find a certain creature and do weird shit is there anything you guys want to do? I want to see if I can find some skulls with an offering for the way back. I'm going to need you to repeat that. Something. What? <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat it? Uh, <coughs> because I'm thinking already on the way back, 
mm-hmm. and they want an offering, so I was thinking about looking for bones and shit. Mm. Okay. Uh, there are pretty much plenty of wildlife running around. There are a couple of uh, very colourful birds that are on top of the canopy, a couple of them flying through the forest itself. There's a bundle of rabbits that you see in the distance that are just in this little hole that are just sat there resting at the moment with a couple of other little rabbits bouncing around them. A little family, if you would. You do see a couple of squirrels up in the tree that are just kind of making their own nests. Also currently transporting what looks to be at least four nuts in their mouth, which is a fun statement to me, but, you know. (laughs) Immaturity. As, are you going after any animal in particular? Or? Uh, <coughs> I'm gonna ask the rest of the party, like, um, do you think we should uh, scavenge some offerings on the way back? For the way back? I can't see why not, because if we don't find anything better later. It might be worth trying to find something new. Okay, so I'm gonna fireball the bunny. <laughs> okay, make an attack. Don't think a, I don't think a bunny is enough to impress those things. <laughs> I mean, there are several bunnies. Make an attack roll. Yeah. Hold on, let me just double check. Because. Really, a bunny isn't over. Hold on. Oh, is there no stats for? Hold on. Yeah, there is. What's it under? Re- how? The, how can I not find? Oh, okay, it's on the. F- yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you fire it forward. Without hesitation, no problems. One bunny is just <laughs> scorched into flames, and then immediately you hear these very high-pitched little little sounds of pain and sadness as they begin to like scatter away, running off into the deeper parts of the forest. Can I try and shoot another one? Oh yeah. Let me just make sure. Okay. So, um, just they catch wind, and immediately it's fight or flight mode. They begin scattering, but as they go flying off, one of them caught at the back gets hit by fireball as well, and just <laughs> given the damage as well, the thing basically gets incinerated. There's still flesh. Mm, very small amounts of fur, but skinning it will be very easy. Yeah, okay. Good. And unless you go hunting for more, that is all you have for the moment. Okay. Uh, I'll just keep an eye out if we see anything a bit bigger. Okay. okay. At uh, two <laughs> dead rabbits, I guess, <laughs> your inventory. <laughs> Yay. Or charred dead rabbits. Two charred rabbits. Okay. Anything else anyone wants to do while you're here? Also, the wildlife are completely avoiding you now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Solidarity. Well, uh, if there's nothing else. Uh, continuing through, you get towards the midway points of the forest, kind of just keeping your eyes out, listening just in case anything does crop up. You see a very small spring off on the side. At the moment, it looks like there's a couple of little birds that are sat on it, taking little sips, 
but very quickly as soon as they notice you they disappear and as you're running through coming toward the end you feel a gaze on each of you almost just as you're about to leave as you turn back and look around you don't see anything in particular and the moment you do feel as if you need to turn around that feeling of being watched disappears and continuing through you lead the forest wandering forward through what's more of a, a hilly area but it's still mostly just open plains though the ground still very broken from the stampeding the sparse amounts of trees lined across the hills not very much strangely on the flatland though there are assortments of colourful flowers and small berries growing here and there there's a small patch of what looks to be just straight up moss that's grown alongside one hill specifically and as you wander forth towards this large pit you can see now that you're getting closer that there is what looks to be a consistent smoke coming out of the middle of it you can't see the middle just yet but you can see that this smoke is rising out anything any of you want to do so we see smoke billowing out you say mm -hmm. oh. how far of it how far ahead is it from this point it'd be about 200 feet or so how much smoke uh, it's enough now that you're close enough you can see it but it's very clear smoke it's not it's not like cigarette smoke or coal uh, being burned or anything like that it, it's very clear and by the looks of the way it's flowing at the minute it would have been tough to see it anyway because it's kind of uh, bowing uh, in the direction you're currently looking from a small source of fire so it's not like buildings on fire stuff like that potential campfire a little potential, bit a little bit potential bonfire i would say something more on the scale of a larger bonfire yeah it, it encompasses at least a good mm, hold on, uh 20 feet in radius Is it in the direction of where the path of destruction is, or does it seem to... It seems um, to end there? there. See, that's where, that's where the path seems to end, you say? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Maybe we're after exploring, to... but with caution. Did someone light the Triceratops on fire or something? I'm <laughs> going to assume that either... If something did set that thing on fire, it's either from a very powerful source or from a multitude of sources to the degree of which they're currently cooking and eating it. Because I've seen campfires before, but that's no smoke from some form of campfire. That's a full-on settlement or a big old pit of fire at least and help oh. him transform into a bird or something uh he can maybe he can just go and have a look see okay <laughs> so he will of course remind you he only has a certain number of them and they can be very useful um so if there is anything else that you can do to scope the place out, it's preferable. It's what? He only has a, a certain number of uses. Yeah. Uh, 
that's the case of sword for going forward, but cautious. Come on, he said it once before, where's your sense of adventure? Hmm. Yeah, sure, let's, let's go. So you guys mile at this point, I think. Okay. Uh, so as you continue forward, as you get to the, give or take, about a hundred foot uh, point, and you continue forward, you start to feel a little bit of heat emanating from that area. It's noticeable as if the winds and the lack of any real like heat from the sun at the minute it it becomes present but it's not suddenly skin crawling or you must turn back bad as you get within the 60 foot radius of it the heat goes up a little bit more but again it's still not much so Bippity. As you get to oh. this point, and you look forward, the sloping or the path in front of you here, the wall here, is a 15 foot drop down, and for each of these is a five to ten foot the first one is a ten foot the rest of fives hmm. so the trail of destruction ends here mm -hmm. you guys look in or around you have a slight uh height advantage at the moment on the planes looking around don't see any more large prints. I'm gonna get to this ledge bit and sort of like kneel and sort of like look down and then look to the others and be like, well, that was about right. Not what I was expecting, but that was about right. You think it fell down though? Um, Lee. Yes. Is there any form of markings or anything that suggests that there was a tumble down here? Surprisingly, no. But you do see what looks to be a couple of points along the walls that looks as if something has bashed into it. Along the ground itself, there's nothing saying that it's fallen in there. Well, what about this, if the surrounding trees? It's not like it went through them. No, surprisingly. Are you saying that partially due to the imprints that it somewhat either got somewhat leaked into it and knocked against the wall, or did something push it? By the looks of it, it might have leapt. But again, the marks along the walls here, they... They... Look as if they're more a byproduct, an accident of some kind. So it could have fallen, could have been thrown in somehow. But judging by the lack of destruction around it being... Very well kept, is a, is a way to put it. It seems it just, with its size, might have hit the side of the walls, maybe? Okay. I ask... I ask our magic you, you, users... Can you sense any trace elements of magic? Like, illusions, that... Maybe it didn't see the hole here until it fell in. Well, I know uh, Halcha has detect magic, which you can cast literally. And as you say that and begin to turn to look to him, 
he's already preparing assorted herbs and candles. And he will need 10 minutes. Sure. What do you guys want to do in the meantime? Mm. Um, I suppose from this point, the sensing thing to do would probably be, be taking some form of watch and suggest we take maybe a covering by the trees there. So we're not too close to the edge, just in case something does come running at us. Okay. Place yourselves wherever you would like to be. Okay. Uh, he's going to sit directly underneath the tree. Um, and as he begins preparing sort of tools and the like, uh, sort of herbs and a couple of candles around him, making a a barrier, we'll call it. He pulls the sword, what looks to be spices out as well, and mashes them together with a mortar and pestle, pestle and mortar. And once he's finished with it, after about nine or so minutes, he pours some liquid over the top of it and drinks it down, eyes closed. And then as he holds on to it, slowly lowers it down, his eyes slowly flicker too, and there's this small glimmer on the, his eyes for a moment that then fade away but to the rest of you at the moment it looks as if he's got like a bad case of like really sore eyes they're like really red and as he places it down onto the ground he looks over toward the pit and wanders over toward the edge looks down toward it and you see he really scans it for a moment None of you can see his face at the moment, but as he slowly turns around, there's that moment of a face of that kind of, oh, really? It would appear um, there are two parts of magic over it. The first, um, as you said, uh, is illusory, but it seems to have passed. The other seems... Um, more not exactly magic really new uh, I would call it more of a a druidic uh, natural magic I think what has happened is an illusion was placed over an already filled over hole or a covered hole an illusion to make it appear as if it was stable and the creature probably ran by fell through and is currently down there sounds like our guy I think it's still odd though who would go that far to cover something up for such a creature what is their intention and are they still down there either the brother of said um, either the brother is smarter than we let on and decided to outwit the beast with some form of magic or there's some form of foul play going But hey, that's just a guess. So, what would you guys like to do? Um, I'm just going to say and suggest, I'm assuming we're going to go down and investigate, or are we just going to sit by and watch and see if any other developments come of this i suggest going in sure go for it and i second that i am yep. curious if there is another druid of my kind out here
Kirby? Yeah, I said yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, if everybody is heading in, uh, please put yourselves to the edge of the pit because you're gonna have to start climbing, motherfuckers. Uh, don't we have a rope or something? You could do. You still need to climb though. Does anyone have seven hole? Mm, nope. Mm. I mean, you're supposed to have, I think. Mm, nope. Not for healthy. And he, I don't, I don't think, um, Kirby gets that just yet. Yeah. Although in the case of Kirby, he's a ninja. He just goes. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, yes, I remember that. Slow fall. Oh, you do have it. Huh. Beginning of fourth level, you can use your reaction when you fall. Oh, nice. To use any. To reduce any fallen damage you take by amount E equal to 5 times your monk level. <clears throat> so what does that mean? Uh, so it means when you would take falling damage, it's reduced by that much. Because, well, until you know how far down the pit goes anyway. So it's 5 times my monk level, so it would be 5 times 4, wouldn't it? So mm. 20. So if I had to, if you were falling down 30 feet, you would take 3d6 uh, fall damage, which can never get more than 18 max, so you take no fall damage. Let me just double check, but I'm pretty sure it's a d6. Isn't it, isn't it like a d10 every certain amount of feet? Yeah, just, just checking. Um, no, it's a d6 for every 10 foot. d6 for every 10 foot, okay. That really isn't that much, surprisingly. Um, yeah. Okay. So you have a way down, no problem. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? As you have to climb down this part first. It is slightly sloped, but it is still 15 feet. Mm. I'm just going to climb there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, athletics checks, please. Uh, Athletics? Mm. Oh no. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, Carrick, you will get down, no problem. Uh, Mosey, as you start climbing down with the weight of your pack and not really feeling too confident with this uneven rock, your hand kind of lets loose and you stumble backwards. And you begin to tumble. Uh, make I won't be able to grab him if he's near me. Uh, hold on. Make a dexterity save with him with advantage. A dexterity save? No, no, he has to make it. Okay. Nice. So as you begin tumbling down, you manage to get your footing on secured rock, and then you're about to lose all balance as your other foot can't find purchase, and then you feel a hand on your back. And you very quickly grab hold, put your foot forward too. And I just sort of yeah. look to look to him, just saying, "Yeah, for now." I'm trying. And you manage to convince yeah, yourself. <laughs> and the rest of the way is just about seven foot, so you climb down very slowly and easily. Uh, Brick will come to the edge and begin to attempt. Boop. Of course. So, like a bumbling buffoon, he looks over the edge, just kind of does that a bit of, meh, that'll be fine. Turns around, begins to climb down, looks like he knows what he's doing, grabs hold of the, a part of the wall, grabs a little too hard, pulls a bit of the rock out, his hand becomes unsecure as he's moving his next hand down, and his body just becomes uneven and he's just full sideways. And he will land on his face and take a d6. <laughs> nice. I sort of notice him for a go to try and help but realise he's full he's fell too fast and I can't reach him. <laughs> As he's already fallen, 
he lands on his side and kind of does that little bit of a grimace and picks himself up cracks the back of his neck for a second just looks over toward you with that face of like ah, god damn it <laughs> and I just sort of look at him with that sort of like uh can't believe that just happened sort of like the sort of like a sigh face where you sort of like half smile and you're looking at him like really <laughs> <laughs> um how fear is I'm trying to think about it mm. I'll stand by near the bottom of where he's climbing to catch me in case he falls you will attempt to climb down <laughs> well then <laughs> so um, like what I need to roll to attempt to catch let me just make sure I'm not missing something real quick because he doesn't seem to have any of the usual items I'd expect him to have. Uh, and make a strength check, since he is dropping right from above you. Straight strength or strength saving? Uh, just straight strength. Okay. Nice. So, as he begins to climb almost immediately, there is no footing, and you can see that he's, he's looking around for the footing, he's holding onto the sides, he finds a place that looks like it'd be good, places his foot for barely a second. Immediately, it's like he slips. His hands can't grip onto anything solid enough and begins to fall down. And you see as if he's almost preparing to cast something. And then you kind of like hold your arms up. He falls literally like a damsel in distress into your arms. And then he, he's got that face, his eyes are closed and scrunched just slightly. His eyes slowly open, he turns and looks to you. Not a word. I sort of like half smile. I, I do a sort of like a half cocky smile and I just go, yeah, yeah, and as I put him down. <laughs> <laughs> and as he steps down, dusts himself off a little bit, and then he looks toward the crater. And you see his you guys look down the closer you are to the center the more heat you can feel you are going to be sweating going down this but you're not going to be boiling how do you guys want to climb down <laughs> looking down you can see the bottom if you have dark vision of at least 60 feet you say dark vision of at least 60 feet uh, sorry, I should be more specific, of at least 30 feet. Yeah, I've got that vision. Hmm. So, as you peek your head down, you look down and you can see 30 feet below is this rocky, slightly... A, it looks discoloured almost, because of how dark vision works. You can't really see what colour it is. But some bits of the full all look discoloured. You you're not sure if that's because of it's a different, there's a different substance over it or something. But it's, um, it's does this does this also help with the check? Uh, I haven't read it fully yet. I'm just assuming you're basically cheating with rune carving because fucking you chose a really good class. Uh, creatures in the streets above the glass. Save and try to make it. You only need to read the first part of the paragraph. Dark vision to 120, oh, fair enough. Uh, yeah, no, no. No, it is, again, as long as it was at least 30 feet, you could. Yeah. But yeah, 120, fucking Jesus. Um, <laughs> you... Yeah. Again, because it's cause dark vision only shows you things in the dark, doesn't give you colour, but stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Fair enough. You can actually, sorry, as well, you can see that the ground beneath does have an absurd crater, uh, an impact. Okay. What is the shape of this crater? It's loosely circular, almost as if the impact was strong enough to cause a ripple, to cause everything else around it to bow 
but not enough to do a perfect circle. It's like some, some parts folded as whatever impacted it, uh, whatever direction it laid or slammed. It's more like... Mm, it's like if you bent a can, it ended up like that. There's still some circular bits, but there's an obvious bend in the middle. I'm just going to share with the group of what I see towards the bottom if they haven't got dark vision to see. Kind of like that, as dumb as it looks. Okay, fair enough. I'll just describe that and make the assumption that either something has indeed, um, something else has probably fallen in before the assumed creature we're assuming that we've followed has fallen in here. Because. To a degree, from a estimated guess, for something to be able to break through that much sort of like mass of like stone or debris in the natural sense, it would either have to be something extremely solid, and if it was that creature, the um, shape of the crater wouldn't be that naturally smooth. You guys... As crazy as crazy as it sounds when I say as smooth, because if it was a creature of sorts, especially with the description that would be given of this creature, it'd be a lot more jagged. And if it was something like that creature to fall through that, it would probably at least break several things before at least making a bit of a tumble, or at least a bit of a crater, but nothing that smooth. Because as loosely as a circle as it is, it's still a circle and it's not like a mass, rough shape. But that's just a guesstimation. Because we've been given a vague description of the creature, but we don't entirely know what, what it looks like. <coughs> and what it's actually capable of smashing through. Other than we assume that trees are easy enough. And just natural small bits of rock and stone, but very unsure about making craters in the floor. So there's no sign of the creature down there? I'm not saying that there isn't a sign saying that something might have made the crater before the creature fell in. Oh, sorry, I probably should have worded that better. There's no corpse of the creature at the bottom. No, just uh, another crater, just another pre-made crater towards the bottom as you, as it is, I'm going to guess, maybe 40, 30 feet. But it is a fair drop. I guess we're going to start climbing down then. Well, I mean, you can probably, you can literally just drop down. I can. Yeah. It's 30 can feet. I? The maximum damage right. that you can be dealt is 18. And you mitigate 20. <laughs> you can literally go, bye guys. All right, clap my hands together, get together, turn, turn to the group. All right, see you at the bottom. <laughs> and I just take a step off. <laughs> Bye. This isn't fancy. I just like take a step and down. <laughs> okay. Oh, and as I'm falling, I shout, I shout out, "Don't do what I did." <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to tell me twice. Okay. I'm adventurous, but not that adventurous to jump down a hole. Oh, he's already on. Really free. <sighs> well, I'm just talking amongst the others in general, not. Um... <laughs> you say something. <laughs> and as you, Hello. as you fall on, whichever version, hero, ninja, fucking, 
either or land and slam into the ground gentle as can be you turn and look up and because you're the only one who can see at the minute there you go can the others nope. see what I'm seeing now nope so for the sake of extended visuals um, you notice that one of the horns is snapped off there is what looks to be a series of scalage along its head that's been heavily damaged and you can see what looks to be tender skin underneath the creature is currently laying down in front of this cave that looks no greater than an extra 10 feet outside of what you can see on the map you can see sat in the corner a very small figure mostly unharmed the creature is currently just there its head slowly lolling back and forth but it turns and looks up toward you with an almost immediate aggression as it slowly stands to a good like 15 foot height okay i want to quickly look around my, uh, my surroundings mm -hmm. how deep is this ridge here uh, so this actually does go from point to point 15 feet up and then from over here yeah. it's uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. let me just double check it's not 35 it's more like 25 because it meets here and over here, at the bottom left, is this lava? Mm -hmm. Or is it just burning? It is lava. lava. It seems to be where the source of the heat is coming from. As now that you're at this point, you see that the airflow above is drawing is this it. Just, is this just a, a small, pool, small pool, or does it go further beyond? It does look like it goes further beyond. There is a sort of slope, but it's not... It's not moving. It's not coming your way. It seems to have just scorched and stayed in place, but it's still ever burning. As well, the things around you, the bodies, uh, make a history check. As for the rest of you upstairs, how are you getting down? I sort of look to the other three and say, So, any other bright ideas, or would, were you guys going to attempt the climb again? Uh, I suggest a rope. <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just freeze it on there. Healthier turns and looks toward you each. I have an idea, but you're going to have to trust me. I sort of like squint a low key daggers at how I feel when he says that. Like, go on. He points down uh, toward the hole. This will be sort of a leap of faith for the first part, but I could always use Entangle halfway down and have it catch us on the way. But the timing will be very precise, and I'm going to need us all to stay together. It will be 20 feet of distance I can cover, but still worst case I block us off from falling to our slight pain best case I catch us and land us ten feet above or do we have a rope or that mm. I mm. don't 
have any. I've got rope on me. Sounds good. I say, hmm, how about an addition to that plan of yours? But as you said before, it requires some form of faith. Well, right, more this. Uh, well, sorry. Uh, Lee, mm -hmm. can I just shout him what I'm seeing? <laughs> if you wanna. Yeah. Uh, guys, can you hear me? <laughs> can you yeah. hear me? Um, Alright. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. He was, he was talking in character. Um, no, I just said then, like, guys, can you hear me? Yeah. Lee, can they hear me from down here? Okay, yeah. Okay, before just I about, continue yeah. speaking, how did it react to me yelling? As you started yelling, uh, I assume you were looking up. Um, the creature still standing. It's almost like it's on guard as it blocks visibility to the entryway of its little cave and it stomps its feet to get your attention again it's down here oh good you guys well. do feel a, a very very low rumble mm. what on earth is that But then I look back to Halfir and just say, Well, the idea is the same elements of, well, casting and entanglement, but. And there's a but. I can tie a rope to you and around you, and you do a free fall of some sorts, and cast the entanglement as you get closer down. And when you fall on it, I'll let go of the rope and we'll follow down, and we'll follow down. Okay. So. The reason why I said it requires faith is because, well, you need to trust me that, well, I'm going to keep hold of you and that you need an extra bit of safety is that you got rope rather than just free falling. Plus, if we all jump together, my arm is too heavy. I may just fall right through and drag you with me. Mm. Alright. So he looks down into the pit as far as he can before little bits of smoke waft past him. A slight amendment to my own plan for a moment. I can see a rim at the bottom where the drop gets a little bit more difficult. I'll put my spell there, aim it downwards, so when we drop down we'll be able to hold on to the entangle, but it won't lock us in place and the drop should be a little bit easier. But yes, I'm somewhat on board. Am I um, dangling you over with rope as you aim for that, or are you just aiming in as we're jumping? Lower your rope down. I'll I'll descend with it, and I'll place my spell when I'm close enough. Mm -hmm. Right. She is well. I'd start tying it round out out there and just um say, well, I'll lower you in. As you're being dangled, make sure you have um, one hand on the rope, because as soon as you're close, I want you to tug it up and down. He grabs a hold of a part of the rope, turns his arm around it, coils it around his arm once, and then he begins to descend down very slowly. I need to... Do I need to make any checks as I'm lowering him, or am nope. I strong enough to be able to do it? Oh, I'd say you're strong enough, jeez. <laughs> I mean, you can literally become the size of a fucking large man. Um, as he 
starts the descent down. There's about a good 10 seconds or so before you feel a gentle tug and you see a small spark of light from underneath in the pit. Before that though, Kirby. Yeah. What would you like to do down there in the in the most fun you place? Told me, you told me to make a history check. Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> the figures I would say litters, but that's not really the case. The figures filling this room that have a, an assortment of wounds on them. A couple of them look like they've just been slapped around by more than likely the creature. None of them really look like they've been trod on or anything. It seems they were very careful of that, but the creature has like been booting them around. And by the looks of them, they're all dead. Um, mm -hmm. They are what's known as Jinsei, which are warriors of a military perspective, but also of a uh, defensive spe uh, perspective to the country, uh, the series of islands in Theron. They're sort of a, a security force, as well as a military. The fact that they're here is a slight question mark, because this, the Willow Plains, is not within their jurisdiction at all. The Willow Plains is its own survival-dominated thing. And each of them do wear their Jinsei outfits. They've even got their hair tied up into uh, a bit of a ponytail. And they're all seemingly brandishing what's mostly shattered now, uh, Katana, reminiscent of their Ken. So they are true blue Jinsei. Or at the, the very least, they appear to be. But yeah, there's a bit of that. Is there anything you want to do? Okay. I climb out of the hole, mm -hmm. and I keep my eyes on the beast. How is it reacting now that I'm climbing out? As you're climbing out and getting a little bit closer, you see the creature puts a foot forward. It has this very small stumble for a moment, but then pulls through it, pushing its other foot forward. And you see its head gets lower, its eyes peering towards you as if it's getting ready to charge. Alright, I've got a very bad plan. <laughs> we love those Before here. I do that, I need, I need to look at all my monk stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Meantime, then. What can I do? Uh, so yeah, Halfir tugs the thing after a bit of a light flashes. What are you doing, Colin? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. He tugs the um, the rope. I'll let go of the rope and um, yeah. <laughs> okay. As you let go, and it starts to unfurl as he drops further and further. You notice the rope, of course continues all the way down until the last few like strands and you grab hold you notice as you look down you see what look to be these vines that have made a sort of a funnel almost so obviously you've got the outskirts of the hole and the drop is now this small at the bottom a very tiny little hole and there are assortments. And, uh, you said, and you said I still got a last part of the rope on me, yeah? Yes. You've got a very donut shaped hole that you can fall through, but even before that, you can grab onto some of the vines and stop the descent entirely. Or fall into the vines and stop the descent altogether. And then go from there. I'll, I'll sort of look to the others and I'll say, Right, two suggestions. There's a little funnel. You can either jump down and aim for it, or you can grab something and travel down on the rope, because it's going through the funnel. Could I yell them to wait for just a moment? Mm -hmm. so Guys, just wait. I've got a bit of a plan. 
as Halfir drops slowly from above on this single vine that is slowly being pulled off the wall as he lands very gently onto the ground and lets it go. He looks forward and he stays still where he is. What is your plan? Is Halfir actually down here now? Mm -hmm. He's right behind you. Althea, I need you to go to the side, to your right, very slowly. Try not to piss it off. I'm going to get it to chase me. <laughs> as, as, he looks, I'm do some... as he looks forward, he has that face of, don't you dare. <laughs> He starts to move slowly to the right, moving back a little bit as the creature notices him. Does the thing notice how fear? Oh yeah, immediately. The second he started dropping down, it, its attention turned up toward him. Okay. Here it goes. I have in my inventory. I'm just gonna throw a dart at it just to get it, <laughs> just to get it to chase me. Uh, roll to hit. <laughs> right now, I don't care if I hit, hit it. I just need it to chase me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's say I'll aim for the soft spot in his head. Okay, you really are trying to poke the bear. <laughs> Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, that'll hit. So, as you throw it forward, uh, as you throw the dart forward, it does pin prick into the soft part of its head, and the creature very quickly shakes its head, and you see the dart go flying off to the side. And yeah, we know what's coming next. It's got to charge at you. That's... I want to spend a key point mm -hmm. for patient defense so I can dodge. Okay. Would that help my dodge, or does it just mean I can do dodge as an extra action? It means <clears throat> if it performs an attack roll against you, it does so with a uh, disadvantage. Which, considering it is. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Cool. So. It's coming charging right through. <laughs> uh, make a... Actually, hold on. So, I have to attempt an attack against you. Disadvantage. Okay, jeez. Uh, so, 17 misses you. Because you're a, a filthy monk boy. Okay. So, now. he misses his gore attack. What is... Uh, and he stops off there. So, we will do initiative from this point. Because you knew it was coming. It did its trampling charge as its air quote surprise, and you were prepared for that. From here, it will be initiative. Nice. Ugh. Big numbers. Big number. Oh, God damn it! Of course, I wasn't pressing the thing. <laughs> Big <Big enough. laughs> Why's it not? Why's it not working? What the? Nani? Nani? Well I'll just, I'll just do it the, the boring way. And we are missing Sol, and Brick. <laughs> It's not doing it. What's going Wow. Sol? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Mazu, do you hear him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. OK. 
Okay. So, uh, I'm going to go for a pee real quick, but it is your turn, Carrick. Think of what you want to do. Um. And yes, free falling is an option. Is the rope loose? Yeah, the one thing I want to inquire is whether um, if the rope is loose and pulling it back up is a free action or an actual action. What do we want to do? Hello Lee, hello Lee. Hello Eric. Um, is tugging on the rope to see it feel if it's loose or secured on something a free action? Uh, that, considering... Uh, it'd just be free. Fair enough. I would like to just give it a tug to feel if it's actually tied or if it's just let loose. Yes. Uh, so it's seemingly secured on something it's not it's not perfect but you can't exactly pull off whatever it is with a little bit of strength then as a suggestion I'm going to suggest to Solemn Brick that they use something to travel down the rope while I hold it on the other end So sort of like, if you will, what is it called again, where you go and like a, something secured on the end of a rope and you just slide down it. I'm, I'm not going to lie, my brain just turned to mush. Yeah, and not, same. Not because it's, yeah, just either way, the intention is you're going to go down the rope to the bottom of the pit. It's very yeah, sick. And not, and not using your hands on it because, well, rope Burns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So and I'll uh, hold and I'll pretty much keep holding it <laughs> as well my action more or less just to keep make sure that it's sturdy. Okay. So as you go bombing down, I assume. I'm not bombing down. I'm holding it for everyone else to um, you know go on it. Uh, fair enough. Okay. Because if I get if I go down it first, then I'm the heaviest, and I end up breaking <laughs> through. That's not going to go well because I'm probably the heaviest out of the lot, with Brick being Shire being the second heaviest. Hmm. Okay. But I'm wearing armor, so that's the main thing. Then, if you're uh, assisting everybody else, is that your turn? Or is there anything you want to say or do? Um. No, that would be my turn, and what I'll be saying is, you guys go down, I'll hold the other end of the rope, because it seems secure, so just slide down it. Okay. Not using your hands. <laughs> rope burn. <laughs> so, the Tricera, very much <laughs> attention grab now, uh, with it stomping around, Everyone upstairs, you can feel the vibrations of what's happening down below. As the creature has got to this point, it's turned, is looking toward you. Its leg kind of is still buckling a little bit, but it kind of stomps onto the ground to save face, sort of. You start to hear the very quiet grumbles from within the cave as a certain little person starts to crawl towards the open way and you can see what looks to be a little bit of uh, blood and a few little cuts uh, just above his right eyebrow but beyond that he seems okay and through all the stomping you can't really make out what he's saying but he seems to be holding his hands up trying to grab attention 
but the creature is stomping forward and is going to attempt to stomp on you. My dear Varnix. Uh, 19 does hit. Uh, you will take 14 bludgeoning damage. So as it takes a step forward, lunges its foot up, stomping down towards you. As you're preparing to dash out of the way, the winds are just pushed against you. And it's like gravity is holding you down and the foot just stomps, barely catching your back. You manage to hold yourself up enough to slide out of the way and stop yourself from being crushed beneath. Uh, that is the creature's turn. Uh, brick above will he will put a little bit of the cloth that he wears peel it off and put it around his hands place it over the rope and slowly descend and he will take his time to go down so he will get to the 10 foot mark where the vines are and he will be down next to me uh, how few uh, he will say are you sure you want to do that alone do you, do you need some help is that me mm -hmm. Just wait, I've got an idea, but I need to get up here. He shakes, wait till it's my turn. shakes his head for a second as if, God damn it. Um, looking you over, seeing, of course, you, the creature has just tried to stomp down on you. Um, he's going to hold his hands together for a moment curl his fingers into a fist and then throw one hand forward while focusing on his left turning his attention to it this what looks to be slight green energy c coming emitting out of his palm you see a series of small what look to be mushrooms that grow and then he crushes them and he's going to cast a kill runes on you if it would go to the tracker that would be great Is it because I'm on a separate? Ah, oh, god damn this game. Hold on. Boop. I don't know why that's not working. Anyway, uh, this will be plus four. Me. Six HP. Uh, so he'll say, "Good luck." And then he will step over here. And he will prepare another spell at some point. So. Yes, I am going to carefully climb down. Okay. So, just like Brick, you get down to the 10 foot point and you are now standing on the vines, which surprisingly feel pretty sturdy is that you uh, can I feel what's happening inside just about yes uh, I'm going to yell down um, do we want to kill it or do we want to just keep it calm What's the plan here, uh, Varnix? I just scream up, give me a minute! <laughs> I'm in the middle of something! I can use calm emotions. Save that for later. <laughs> okay then. Help you know, I guess. Okay. 
And, and that's it, I guess. Okay. And now to the plan. Your turn, Bonnet. Okay, step of the wind. Mm -hmm. I want to get here and wall run up here. Mm -hmm. But I want it to chase me so it can bang his head on the walls. <laughs> I thought that was where you're going. <laughs> but then there's another part of the plan which is going to be touch and go. Mm -hmm. Do you just want me to tell you my plan? I mean, it's up to you. Do it in stages. Alright, we'll see how we go. So, step of the wind. Mm -hmm. Hoping it chases me. To get. So, it chases me from here to the wall. And I can wall run up. So, that way I'm above it. Yep. Yeet. Okay. So, as you go charging over, dashing up the walls very quickly. The creature's stomping directly behind you. Of course, this is a turn-based thing, so Carrick, it's your turn. So, uh... Well... I just kind of sort of like, um... Sort of look down to the others and just say, Are you guys good for me to come down, or... Do you need to move a little bit more? I think it's fine. Ben, still holding the rope. Garrick's just going to jump down and aim for the hole. <laughs> okay. So would you a leap down? You start descending, you feel the, the hot wind, the hot smoke blowing through you. Immediately, a lot of your your full body, the temperature just rises very quickly and as you descend through through this tiny funneled hole you feel as the vines and the, t uh, the tendrils kind of just like grasp at you and stop you for a moment. You notice the entire thing starts to bow downward and brick and sol you feel as the, technically the ground becomes uneven, the vines they slope down as he falls through them and because it drops you low enough that you get below the 10 foot threshold, you simply land without damage. Very nice. <laughs> and you land directly behind it. <laughs> this whole time I'm like, hi, 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 like <laughs> trying to keep his attention. Oh, it's focused on you, don't worry. You threw a fucking dart at his head. <laughs> <laughs> he threw a dart at it, said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as I see Kara come, come, come down, I am gesturing with my arms for him to go. <laughs> go away! <laughs> Do I have spare movement to like, move? Go that way, yes. go that way, go uh, that way, go that way, go that way. Oh, so you have 15 foot. That's fine with me, I'll just move next to half here, there. Can I do a stealth check? Yes. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, fucking. Although, to be fair, considering you just went. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to keep his attention. Yep. I'm like, no, I'm like doing the star it, jump. It, it is focused. Is it? No, no, no. That's yeah, that's fine. It is focused. Do a star check. Wait. I am like no. doing star jumps to keep his attention. <laughs> Jumping jacks. <laughs> so, I'm gonna do a perception check with disadvantage because it does not like you. Specifically, Avonix, obviously. Mm. <laughs> Got a twelve. Uh, so, Varnex, do a performance check. Oh no, it's charisma. Oh, excuse me. It's charisma. <laughs> so, you notice, as he lands behind it, the impact isn't like a massive thing, but he does land hard enough that you hear that kind of poof. And then you see the creature, its head and body slowly starts to turn around, and then you're just like there, jumping, dancing, trying to get its attention, and the creature just looks even more aggravated that you're taunting it. And you see its body start to stamp and stomp. 
and yeah, I'm going to continue to move as it's um, still directly focused. <laughs> yep. And the creature. And I'll move here. Uh, yeah. So it's going to trampling charge. So so it's going to come here as it's charging toward this point. You notice it, it's almost like it's in a blind rage. It does stumble midway. And as it's charging forward, you see its head rising upward, attempting to gore toward you, but it doesn't have the length or technically even the horn to do so anymore. But it's going to gore into the wall. Uh, so as it comes charging this direction, slams its head full into the wall, and you see a ton of rocks and a large chunk of the wall get excavated, we'll call it, as he does 21 piercing damage to the wall. And you feel the ground underneath you becomes very unstable for a moment as he hits it, but you see as he slams into the wall, it kind of gets stuck, and you see it's trying to push its head back out as if its entire head has been cemented into the wall. You see it's moving around, you can hear this rubble throwing left, throwing right. You hear the stomping of its feet louder and louder. Yeah. In the corner of technically each of your eyes, I guess. You see the child poking its head out, throwing it its arms in the air, trying to get everyone's attention. Oh. You can't hear him, though, with all the noise of the creature. Where is where the nearest to him? Varnix, who is right in front of the creature, technically. Uh, where the source of all the noise is coming from. <laughs> Okay, so Brick, uh, do, 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 do. I'm just going to move everyone to this because you're all going to end up hearing me anyway. Uh, grab you from the other map. Oops. Yeah, I was going to say you may need to move our initiates, well, initiation to this map as well. I think if you guys, I don't know if you can close it. And reopen it. Does it allow you to? No. Oh, okay. Well, I could always just I could always just roll another initiate initiate, and then you just um, copy the um, scores we got from the last one. Or I can do this. Or you can do that with your hands. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, hey. I'll just replace you all one by one. Yeah. So how fear is twenty? Works for me. Uh, next is eleven. Can everyone see their initiatives, Bar Carrick? Yep. I can yep. see mine now. Nice. Okay, so. Rick, looking around, looking at you guys, he's kind of going to follow the beat of everything. We can have the creature just stomping and trying to shake its head free. He's just going to slowly step out of the crater and join you guys over here. And then he's going to look down. He's going to, He just kicks the body a little bit to see if it's dead. That'll be him. And yeah, health is kind of just going to stand there. Not really sure what the fuck's going on. And then he's going to look over toward the kid and begin to very slowly make his way around. Sol! Yeah, I'm gonna climb up as well. Uh -huh. More precisely. Uh, how much was it to climb up? Uh, to climb down. What? To climb down from, uh, the yeah, yeah to here, like where 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 I am right. Oh, now. to drop from that point was just ten feet. But I'm considering it five because it's a free fall. Air quotes. Um, the rest is just new normal movement speed from anywhere on the map here, except for of course, 
all of that. Uh -huh. okay. uh... So you have five less uh, movement speed plus whatever you've already done. Oh, no, sorry. That's fine. I'm going to need to click on that. Uh, oh, it's a humanoid, so I can't use it anyway. Uh, okay. This. Okay, so I need this. So let's say I move a bit. Okay. Ah. Full full speed. I'm going to try and signal the kid to walk slowly. Mm -hmm. Through here. Or something. Okay. Or here. Okay. okay. Is that you? to prepare uh, fireball just in case it this charges the, the kid so okay. it will uh, deserve the attention and if not I'm just gonna do nothing okay been the man with the plan, Vernix. Alright, so its horns are embedded in the wall. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now comes the difficult part. <laughs> I try and I jump on its head and try and ride it. <laughs> okay. And I want to do my best to try and steer it <laughs> into the lava. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Very interesting. So. That's my plan. If this goes tits up, I've got nothing. So, of course, you jump down. Um, during its turn, it will attempt to free itself. As of the moment you're on top of its head, as you jump down, uh, it does have like a, a main sort of that you like land on and you grab these two spiked bits that look like horns on the top of its head um uh, and you kind of like hold on and start to try like push toward it to go to a different direction the creature is like rattling its head around with these bare minimal movements and trying to like shove you off as well as free itself during its turn there will be a check for you is that you, though? Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to free so I can try and steer it into lava in the hopes that it kills it. <laughs> so fucking mean. <laughs> okay. Uh, Garrick. Hello. Your turn. Right. Seeing that everyone else is, well, moving towards where the small child is, I am going to somewhat follow suit. So I don't know if quite so much movement I have. Deep. Hmm. I sort of I'll head over here, just trying to stick to the wall a little bit. Okay. And. Um, yeah, that'll be me. Okay. Then the Tricera. Um, it's going to attempt a strength check, which it has very good strength. Apparently, not when I fucking need the narrative to move on. With a seven. So. <laughs> I mean... 
Thornix, make a strength check with disadvantage. It's it's not a negative against you. It's just because the creature couldn't get itself free. You have less leeway to direct it. Yeah. So as you're at the minute, because it's thrashing around with its uh, everything from its neck backwards, you're, you're struggling with the jutting movements. You're holding on, but you've got not not much room to maneuver it while it's still stuck. Since it's still stuck in in the wall, I can't steer it. Right now, my objective is just to stay on it. Okay. The moment it's loose, that's when I want to try and steer it. Yes. Okay. Is that uh, actually no? That's the creature's turn. Uh, Brick, seeing sort of what you're doing, seeing everyone else moving the fuck out of the way, uh, he's going to move as well on the creature's turn. The child will move as well. So he can get there. And as he gets closer, you guys just about make out what he's saying. And you hear the words protecting me. And to be specific, this is you two who can hear him. The thrashing is still so loud. Carrick, and I mean Brick doesn't understand, but... Carrick, you just about hear the word protect, and then the rest kind of cuts out. Um, how does done? He is going to waddle over toward the kid, grab him, pull him back, and he will prepare to cast Chill Touch against the creature if it turns and sees what's happening. And now that the kid is closer, you guys hear him saying, literally repeatedly, the creature is trying to protect me. Okay, so how do we stop it from trying to kill us then? Prove you're not trying to hurt the kid. Okay. I'm going to... Give the kid food. Mm. I'm going to also yell at Varnix. Uh, he's trying to protect the kid. Let's just show him that we're not going to harm him and maybe this will defuse without a fight. Uh, Varnix, make a perception check. Mm. Oh, we're still on disadvantage, sorry. Yeah, look, at, look, look at that. Yeah, nice. So, you you do hear him as you're like trying to hold on. You kind of hear him behind you as the creature kind of stops for a couple of seconds and tries to start pulling itself out with its hind legs, pushing along the ground. You do hear what happens. Uh, what he said. What do you? Uh, I mean, it's not your turn yet, but. Is that you, Sol? Uh, I mean, I approach the kid and I give him some food and I ask if everything's okay and do I have any curing spells? No, I do not. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> um, other than again, other than a little like uh, bruise just above his right eyebrow and a little bit of blood on his face doesn't look like it's his blood either uh, he seems fine he looks slightly pale but not dangerous pale it okay. seems like it's possibly just dehydration and not had much to eat then I'm gonna give him some water and food of course mm -hmm. okay your sister's been looking for you by the way as as it's, as like cramming his mouth full of food, he's just looking up at you and just nodding slowly. Okay then, does it calm the thing? Uh, we will see. Uh, so at the moment, Varnix 
Uh, what do you want to do after hearing all that? Okay, first I scream. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I had a plan. Now I just need to defuse an already pissed off Triceratops that I pissed off. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to jump off its head back up onto the cliffs. Mm -hmm. Abandon the plan. Abandon the plan. And I just scream at, at the others. Do calm emotions. Do calm emotions. Do calm emotions. <laughs> do calm emotions. I can't. It's on a humanoid creature. Then why the fuck did you say you could? <laughs> because it, because I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't read the description. I just saw calm emotions. I remembered it wrong. <laughs> All right. So I guess I use the rest of my movement to just. Yeah, as high as I can, mm -hmm. since I've pissed off and I <laughs> really need to try to defuse the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that you? Yeah, that's all I can do. I'm not I, clearly. I can't attack it now. Mm -hmm. Piss it off more. Do it. Dare you? <laughs> uh, would you like to do, Carrick? I'm just curious. By this point, have I um, heard that the well, the whole story? Mm -hmm. The creature at this point has stopped smashing and flailing and is more just trying to pull itself free. Okay. Um, I'm going to look to the kid and I just say, You said the thing doesn't, was protecting you, right? Mm. You see, he's taking little sips of water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have an idea. But you're going to need to be brave with me, yeah? He turns, looks over toward the dinosaur, turns back, looks to you, and just nods. I'm gonna walk over, sort of like next to Halfir and next to the kid, and I'm gonna reach out my hand and towards the kid and say, "Hold my hand and walk with me." You see, for a moment, as you give your hand, as you move your hand forward, there is a little bit of a flinch. And then he just kind of looks you up and down, noticing your hand extends only so far. And he looks at Halfie, who's currently like holding him, and he takes your hand. And right. yeah, Halfie sets him down. I just gotta look to the kid and I say, "What we're gonna do? We're gonna slowly walk near it." I'll get its attention, and hopefully if it sees you, and it sees me, might try and walk to it, calm it down, and soothe it. But if it gets violent, hide behind me. Looks up to you, nods. And I'm going to move ten more feet forward with the kid in hand. Yes. And I'm going to yell to try and get the at creature's attention just by going hey just loud not violent just loud okay um for the time being we'll consider this loosely not initiative as the okay. creature finally draws its head free from the rock and it pulls itself backward a little it looks up towards where Varnix ran off to but can't exactly seem to see him and then turns back in almost a frenzy and then it sees you with the child and you see as its back legs start to kick dust backwards as if it's preparing to charge but then it looks toward the child and you see the leg stops right I'm going to look to the child and I say this is the part that's going to be a little bit scary, but if it's protecting you, it shouldn't be a problem. Walk with me very slowly, and we're going to walk towards it. Nods slowly. Eric takes a very deep inhale, <laughs> and then a very slow breath out as he takes his first step forward. 
Okay. So the creature. Yeah, I'm just going to look back to the others and just say, "Do not move. I will need you on standby in case, but for the time being, do not move." You notice that they nod. Or oh, Halsey does anyway. And Brick. Take another step forward to it. Okay. As you get closer, there is this low kind of. It, it's kind of like the, the noises dogs make when they're impatient. They're kind of like low, like whine almost. But with quite a more powerful tone behind it. And it looks... I can never step forward, but with this time, leading the kid slightly more ahead, just showing that the kid is wanting to see it. Mm -hmm. you see, as, you get, take one, as you get one closer, with him. the creature's head slowly lowers down toward the ground and it slowly lowers its body until you see its stomach hits the ground and its head bends forward. The snout is pretty much in line with the kid as it looks at him. Pet him. And I'll come with. And I move forward with the kid but make sure the kid has first contact. Mm -hmm. So as he takes little steps closer toward the creature. You see as he slowly looks up, his face takes on that sort of look of awe because this creature, even even the head is like 10 foot mm. and the creature, uh, the kid itself is like barely even two. And you see as gently takes a little tap just underneath uh, the chin. And you see he rubs very slowly for a moment with this slight recoil for a second and then the head of the creature tilts left and right in confusion and they exhale and I'm, gonna step forward. I'm gonna step forward and take a very slow gentle hand on to the side of its snout as well and just very very delicately just do a up and down rub motion make an animal, like sort of make an animal handling board. check with advantage Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you come a little bit closer, you see its eye, the left side of its face, turns and looks to you with a little bit of a squint. And you see it looks as if it's about to get aggressive. But the child's still like stroking very gently underneath the chin. And it just stares you out. It lets you stroke it. Though it doesn't seem not exactly not happy but not as interested and it looks down toward the child as it exhales you see almost like almost akin to steam like blows against him and the air like almost blows him backwards and the kid just like falls onto his butt and then for a moment there's a silence where it looks as if his face starts to well up, but then he just starts to laugh instead. And by this point, it <coughs> hasn't looked back at me yet. It, it takes glances, yeah. What I'm going to do even further is I'm going to sit down and then just stroke it under its chin like the child did. Mm. But very slowly. <laughs> In in the most fun turn of events you hear the sound of something on the wall behind it hitting against the wall and you see little bits of rock start to trickle down from where it gored into the wall and then you see a swaying tail very slowly but the meat and the strength of the tail is enough even just passing along the rocks it's causing minor damage. Very minor, but minor damage. What's everyone else doing? I just gotta look to the kid and just smile and just say, Good job, little man. You're very brave. Smiles and then, with both hands, starts to like scratch uh, this, what now you notice as a like more fleshy area underneath the neck. 
and you just hear <laughs> as the tail starts like smashing into the wall behind it, scraping along it. What's everybody doing? As you see a slightly <laughs> more pet like triceratops. And no, we are not getting Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, if you can make it, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to try and look what's inside here. Mm -hmm. Um. So. As you kind of like tilt your head and look inside. It is a little bit dark, but you can see what looked to be, I mean, as evident from the image on the map anyway. There are a couple of bones and bits of blood and the like in there. Though it looks like in the furthest right corner of the room, there is what looks to be a series of like twigs and sticks and some small, more tiny animal bones, you think. Um, that seem to have made some kind of like nest or bed. There's what looks to be a couple of shells left over on the ground. Unless you can get closer, you're not entirely sure what's going on there. Okay. I don't see anything that's like really inside. Does it go any deeper? Is it like a tunnel or just a small? Oh no no! It's literally just this. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay, then. Uh, then I think in the next tunnel, grab some memorabilia for fight, you know, for the way back. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. So you're going into the small cave? Yeah, sure. Okay. So as you wander in, um, in that small corner, you can see what, again, it's kind of hard to discern really unless you have a history with like skinning and tanning and the like, or animal bones. Um, but they look probably like the local wildlife, like the squirrels and rabbits and the like, they, they were probably just eaten and the bones spat out. You kind of just like collect them up. There's enough there for about four different animals. And you kind of just like pile them in the same area as you got the rabbits. You notice the the shells, these small like chipped off parts, as well as what looks to be behind it broken, what looks to be a hatched egg of some kind. There's hmm. still what looks to be this kind of uh, very bright yellowish sickly like goo on the inside of it so whatever came out of it has to have come relatively recently would i be able to discern what the egg is uh who has the bestiary i do then yes <laughs> um with a plus five uh make a um, let me just double check. A uh, nature check, or animal handling, whichever is better. And this is more so for, even if you yourself don't know it, it's a course of you taking the time to read the book, and figure it out. Oh jeez. Um. We'll get back to you in a second. Sure. Uh, what's everyone else doing? Just entertaining the very pet-like beast at the moment with mm. scratches and, sh and bets, <laughs> <laughs> and very and somewhat getting, well, trying to very um, it, well, trying to un stiffen myself because at this point Carrick is a little bit got this wanderlust because this is the sort of adventure he's set out for. 
Yeah, at the same time, he can't believe right now he is petting and scratching a um a very thing that is twice his well three I'd times say about three times his size, like it's a pet dog that he's sit that he's seen in the street. <laughs> And he's trying to get over that very subtly, like, am I am I actually petting this thing like it's a pet? <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, at the same time, keeping straight face for the for the kid to more or less feel that somewhat at ease, as well as keeping the beast's temperament as tamed as it is right now. So I throw in a little smile here and there, just to show emotion on my face, but not to sort of like show that I'm overly nervous or anything. Mm -hmm. cool. And then you entertain and the kid's kind of like just scratching along too. It's just looking very curiously along the like scalage across its face, looking at the tusks coming out the side of its mouth. Just kind of very entertained. Everybody else? Healthier and Brick are currently just observing. Brick looks as if he wants to come over, but doesn't want to ruin any like delicate balance that there is at the moment. Vargax. I just screamed from the top. Is it safe now? <laughs> you see the head slowly rises up in irritation. Just go. I'm just going to be like, hmm, not entirely sure, mate. What you could do? Oh, oh, there's a, there's a good beastie. As I just sort of like continue to sort of like stroke its under its chin and be vocal to somewhat get its attention. What you can do is maybe slowly come down, but very slowly, because this thing seems to be very reactive to if you're moving very fast-paced. And I'm going to try and say this as, well, as delicately as I can, but try to come down and, you know, not be a threat. I make way. I make my way up to the cliff edge here. Mm -hmm. But as I'm, as I'm walking from there to here, here, I go into a crouch, then on my stomach, and I just crawl along the edge and just poke my head out, <laughs> and I just see <laughs> how it reacts to seeing me. It's eye on the side of its head that's pointing toward you. As it sees you, you see it starts to squint, and head slowly raises, and turns to look toward you. You see almost as if the body starts to tense, as if it wants to do something. And then you see from below as the kid's like raising his arms up, trying to get at the chin. The creature turns its head back down slowly, keeping its eye on you as it lowers its head down to the ground again for the child. But now it's turned its head to a point that it's always got its eye on you. Thanks. I just I um... hate to tell you this, and I say this as I'm standing back up, so I can partly reach sort of like to the side of its face a little bit more and just stroke it sort of like the side of its face. I think you're gonna need to actually come down and walk towards it, but not showing any threat, because if you um, stay as you are. It's going to think that you're going to try and jump on its back again. So if you just show your intentions, it shouldn't be as hostile. I can't say, but the only thing, only insurance I will give you is if it does try to charge, I will put myself between it and you. Not sure if I can do much, but I'll try my best. I'll, I'm still led down on the cliff edge. <laughs> I know it sees me, so I just, I just wave. I, uh... You you hear a very irritable, 
exhale through its nose. Do not slow down the glyph, just walk around. I think I'm good where I'm at. <laughs> You're gonna what? I'm just gonna stay here for a little bit. <laughs> this is where I am now. I, I will live here forever. I'm trying to help here, but uh, uh, okay. What's the and... plan? How can we get out, get out of here? I'm just going to be here a couple minutes until we have a plan. Well, we need to find... well... I sort of look down to the kid and say, How did you get... how did you get in here other than, you know... Did you fall through here or was... is there another way in here? And um, out? Um... Turns and looks up toward the Triceratops and points at it. I wrote the dinosaur. Sort of like, um, Carrick sort of like sighs and he just sort of like smiles and he goes, Okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. I sort of like turn and I turn to, um, Halfir and say, By any chance are you still they able to talk to animals because we may need a a translator, if you will, because as well, as playful as this thing has gotten with us and the kid here, I can't really communicate with the thing. No. But I can do it again if you need it. Though that will be my last first level. Well, the only other option if we don't have a way to communicate with it is, well, we need to probably start trying to find a way out. I'm not against it, just make sure it's what we're def definitely doing. I sort of look to the kid again and say, Do you know, um, you wrote the dinosaur, but did the dinosaur jump, jump in through the hole up there? I point upwards. Or did you guys come through the somewhere else? You see the head turns and looks up. And now that a bit of time has gone by, all the vines are like hanging loose and you can see the holes fully open again, giggity. Um, as he looks up, he points towards it and nods. A uh, dinosaur kind of fell through. Uh, we were. Uh, well, I was um, being attacked by. Um, looks around the room and points at the people on the ground. Um, it was nearby and stomped around and picked me up by accident. Um, um, we fell from up there. Uh, I don't remember much of what happened after, though. Sort of look, I sort of look at the thing, sort of like size it up, and I just look up to the hole and I'm like. I'm really not strong enough to put to pull that thing up with me, I don't think. I sort of look to my arms and sort of like tense a little, and try and see any muscle sort of like tear <laughs> out of the chain mail and be like, hmm. I sort of size up the cliff and I'm like, yeah. So I look back to health and I just say, I think we may need to look for another way out, but I don't know where to start. On that note, um, we'll be ending session in a second. Okay. Uh, so, as you're reading through, the... Eggs. Never clip hanger for next week. Okay, I was just going to tell you what kind of egg it was. If you want that as a cliffhanger, sure. I might forget, though. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> <laughs>
um, so as you're like flicking through the book on the page of the charger triceratops there's no notes about egg, its eggs or eggs in general there so you kind of flick through for a bit eventually you find an area that specifies about eggs and the types of creatures that come from them and the shapes what to look for some are spotted blah 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 in the, sh in the case of a triceratops a charger triceratops their eggs are usually oval shaped and they're usually a little bit bigger uh, due to some baby triceratops end up with pretty more like widthy uh, horns we'll call them even at birth and so they need more room otherwise they will just crack open very quickly um, so you're pretty sure that this dinosaur that you're really encountering is a mother or at the very least is somehow related to the eggs here and this nest though how it fell through from above not realizing it was there is a whole other question but given that the egg has been cracked or has been birthed recently and this triceratops is on its own it's it's a problem and given that there are a couple of more eggshells lying around and then there's these people out here I'll let you come to any conclusions you want. That will be session. Though each of you have a inspiration question for free. Does anyone have an inspiration question for me? I gave my extra inspiration to um, Brick. Yes. But I'll keep a hold of my inspiration that I had from the session before, just as an emergency. Yes. And if I so happen to have to recap next session, <laughs> then um, I will have a question for the end of the next session. Yes. If I don't use it for anything. So the inspiration we got at the beginning of the session expires like if now, right? Uh, no, no. Everybody got, got inspiration at the start. If you even if you already had it or not, doesn't matter, ignore it. Everybody has normal inspiration and you can ask a question. In the case of Connor, he gave up his question to give Brick a inspiration. Ah, I see. Well, I have an inspiration and I'm going to use it next... not this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, Kirby, you got any inspiration questions to ask? I already had an inspiration and I don't really have any quite questions, so yeah, I'm good. No kidding. Uh, that is session, my dudes. I have to go cook dinner at 10 pm. Thanks. <laughs> um, Lee, did you get my messages? Uh, yes, I will reply to them when I'm getting into bed. Okay, dokey. Um, yeah, I thought I'd just give you the heads up because I um, cut the bulletin out and yeah, Stefan, he was the first one to reply. Very nice. If I I did say if possible too, so if I do get someone else, I'll let you know as well in case you want five. But if you yeah. just want the four, I mean, fucking yeah, then no. relatively the more the merrier. Well, um, I'll give you a message. Actually, I'll give you a message while I'm making tea. Um, right, I have to dash everybody. It has been okay. a pleasure.